Optimize your workflow with these keyboard shortcuts for DaVinci Resolve. Synity, your digital cinema tech resource, supported by B and H and CVP. Hello, I'm Alex from Synity, and today I'm going to show you some very useful keyboard shortcuts in DaVinci Resolve that I use on a daily basis to speed up my workflow. First, a very useful one that I use very often, which is Shift Z. This lets you toggle the timeline view between a zoomed in view and the whole timeline. This is especially useful if you have a couple of clips hidden at the end of the timeline for future use that you may have forgotten about. But when you press Shift Z and it shows you the entire timeline, you will see those clips at the end and you can delete them. If you press Shift Z again, it will zoom in into the zoom stage that you were in before. Another very useful one is Alt and Y. This combination will highlight all the clips after the playhead. So if you, for example, want to move something in, create some space to put a clip or a section in, then you put your playhead where you want that to be, press Alt and Y, Everything is selected after the playhead. You can move everything to the right to create some space for a clip or another section that you might want to put in. But be careful. Clips underneath the playhead that uh, extend further to the left, so to the beginning of the timeline, will also be selected. So if you don't want to move these, deselect them by command, clicking them with the mouse. The arrow keys and the JKL keys are useful for navigating around the timeline. With the left and right arrow key, you can jump in one frame increments to the left or to the right. So one frame forward or one frame backward. With the up and down arrow keys, you can jump to the next cut or to the cut before uh, where you were at. With the JKL keys, you can control the playback in the timeline. So if you press L, it will start playback at normal speed. If you press K, it will halt the playback, and if you press J, it will playback the timeline in reverse at normal speed. If you press J or L multiple times, this will speed up the playback. Now, here's an important distinction that can trip up newcomers to the program. The difference between the backspace and the delete keys. Both keys will delete a clip from your timeline, but there's a very important distinction. When you hit backspace, it will only delete the clip and leave a space. If you hit delete, this will perform a so-called ripple delete. So it will delete the clip and also the space that the clip left behind. It will move everything after the clip to the left to close that space. I usually only use the delete button and the ripple delete function when I'm working on very simple timelines with only one track. So there will be no unintended the deletion of any other clips above or below. To set in and out points in either a source clip or in the timeline, we can use the I and O keys. This is pretty simple, but it can also trip up newcomers to the program. When in and out points are selected in the timeline and parts of the timeline are grayed out and not accessible anymore or not available to render. To get rid of these in and out points, you simply press Alt and X. This will delete the in and out points in either the selected clip or the timeline. Now, why would you want to uh, set in and out points in the timeline, either for, for four point or three point editing, or if you only want to render out a certain section of the timeline, if you have just changed the scene and you don't want to render out the entire project, you can set an in and out point in the timeline and only render that scene. The comma and full stop buttons are used to slip clips around the timeline in one frame increments. So if I press comma, it will slip the clip one frame uh, to the left, uh, so to the beginning. Or if I press the full stop, it will slip the clip one frame to the right. This is good when you have fast cuts and you need to edit very precisely. Just like in many other programs, copying and pasting is done by simply pressing Command or Control C and Command or Control V to paste something. But Resolve has a trick up its sleeve. Uh, you can also just copy attributes from one clip to another. This works by selecting the clip that you want the attributes to be copied from uh, and pressing Control or Command C. Then 
you select the clips where you want the attributes to be copied to and press Alt V. This will open up a context window where you can select which of the attributes you want copied. This can be zoom levels, crops or even effects that you want to copy over. That's also a very good uh, key combination Alt V to remember. If you're switching over from Premiere, Final Cut, Avid or even Pro Tools, then DaVinci Resolve has got you covered because you don't have to learn all new keyboard shortcuts. You can just use the ones that you're used to. How does that work? If you go in the menu under DaVinci Resolve, you will find the point Keyboard Customization. This opens a new window and at the top right corner of that window, you can now select the program that you're used to and all keyboard shortcuts will switch over to uh, the layout that was used in that program. In this window, you can also customize your shortcuts. So you can change them around, uh, assign new ones and uh, just customize them in any way, shape or form that fits you. I hope that these shortcuts will help you optimize your workflow. Stay tuned to our YouTube channel for more DaVinci Resolve quick tips. Bye bye.